What's going on, you beautiful people? Thanks so much for tuning back in today. I'm doing this video, you know, in several different parts just because I feel like there's a lot to unpack here. I'm going to make it like a mini series within a series. Pay attention to that when watching this in case you're like watching one of these videos and you're like, bro, what the hell is he talking about? Like, I'm completely lost. I mean, if I'm being completely honest, that might just be how you are in general watching any of my videos on this channel. But so far, y'all have been able to figure it out. So proud of you. So I'm not really sure if I should like say like, hi again, um, like take 15,000 because this stuff is really complicated for me to explain and I don't even know like not the right direction, but like what direction like I'm trying to really go with. Cause it's not necessarily like tips on helping y'all. Cause like I'm lost. I don't know what the fuck's going on. It's more like explaining the emotions or like how intense it is. Um, for my own fucking therapy. But also for anyone out there who's like feeling like they're alone, cause honestly, I feel alone in this all the time. I'm reading literally like blog posts and like different forums and like it describes, like it fucking tells me about me, um, which is scary. And lastly, like also for people who might know somebody who's going through this crap and like they don't understand because if like I'm having trouble explaining it, I bet a thousand other people are having trouble explaining it and all to varying degrees. Like there was at one point in time where like I didn't say shit cause I didn't know about shit. Lately though, I've been really interested in understanding like attachment disorder um, and complex PTSD. I've referred to both in my channel before in different videos. Um, and while like I've been diagnosed with both, it's very strange in the sense that like, I've only formally been diagnosed with like bipolar disorder and depression and like, um, what's the other one? And ADHD. <laughs> and that was only because like, you know, I'm one on prescribed medicine. And then also like I needed the sheet of paper that said I had ADHD and all the other things so that I could get like accommodations and blah, 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 blah. But like for these, like they just kind of refer to them in our sessions. Like they use like, oh, well, that like sounds like your complex PTSD or how do you think that's related? Um, but you don't really get like a printout of like, you have been diagnosed um, unless you're like hospitalized or something. At least that's been my experience. I don't know if that's wrong. Like tell me because I don't like, I don't know. So I say these things just like trying to kind of get my head around them essentially um, because like it helps me understand, like I know what I'm feeling. I don't need to like look up what I'm feeling necessarily, but it helps to understand like what's going on with the brain. And then like, it kind of just like makes me feel a little bit more normal because it's like, all right, I'm crazy as fuck, but there's a reason why I'm crazy as fuck. But yeah, looking at empathy and bonding. So this is a forum that I found specifically about like complex PTSD versus like attachment disorder and like kind of what, what's the difference between the two. Um, and it's from like a psychology student who's like currently in college getting their like, or like working on their dissertation or like medical degree. I don't really know what stage they're in. They're past undergrad though. So, you know, I imagine it's pretty credible, some good information, but it talks about how like, even though, you know, their empathy is lowered or it's super high, it's not to an extreme extent. So it's usually just enough, they say, to make like those who are experiencing complex PTSD a bit rude and abrasive and to stick up for themselves, but like in a more than normal pace, but not like somewhere where people are like off putish. I don't know if that really makes any sense, like now that I say it out loud, but it made sense when I read it. Um, this person's specifically referring to reactive attachment disorder, which is pretty much what I have. Reactive attachment disorder and the difference, um, they say that it causes a severe difficulty in feeling like effective empathy. Um, so compassion for others, like very severe, um, similar to sociopaths. Um, and they have, they have little to no empathy, but their empathy to bond and all of that shit, um, it's not entirely absent, but it's been like extremely buried. Um, and it's like difficult to trigger and like, it's difficult for them. So sociopaths, you know, it's like, apparently it's just not there. They, they can't trigger it. Um, people with RAD or, you know, reactive attachment disorder, it's just buried really far underneath. But similarly to both of them, you know, it's just really uncomfortable to even deal with emotional closeness or like anything related to like compassion, empathy, all of that jazz. I would, in my mind, I think that, you know, a reactive attachment disorder is complex PTSD is kind of like a symptom of that 
or it's like on the same spectrum because again like i always think about mental illnesses and disorders and disabilities as like being like on a spectrum it's either you have it or you don't have it but like in terms of like the severity and where it falls and like all that crap um spectrum so complex ptsd for me you know i i think of it being less about my early stages of development number one um like within the field of like mental health or mental illness research and doctors and all that stuff um they typically think about complex ptsd as anyone can experience it like yes it does happen a lot or it's developed a lot from childhood trauma just because like that's such a significant part of human development and that's like honestly a large part of why like people like me have issues later on in life. Um, the biggest difference between attachment disorder and, and complex PTSD is that like complex PTSD can happen whenever and attachment disorder like typically happens, specifically has to happen in childhood in order for it to be called attachment disorder. I think about the traumatic experiences emotionally that I experienced as a child that at least for me um, were not like just moments of sadness, they were moments of extreme, damn. Guys, this is always so fucking hard to talk about because I like, I start thinking back and it becomes so vivid in my mind. Um, I can't even get through sentences. I think back to times when um, I, was, I wasn't in distress. Like it wasn't like I was just sad. It wasn't like I was just crying. Like I was physically, emotionally, like I thought the world was ending. And this was at the age of like five and six. And I didn't think about suicide necessarily. Um, I don't think I was that young to kind of, kind of grasp that idea. Um, I didn't even know what suicide the word meant. Um, but I definitely felt like the distress was so much that I, like, I would say, like, I don't want to be here, um, or I, I wish I was never born, or, you know, like, things along that line that, you know, no one ever should be saying, let alone a five-year-old. The biggest one, I think, being my mother. Um, so, like, while my mother was not there when I was a child, um, she was also not there throughout my life, and it sucked more in the sense that, like, she would come in and then come out of my life. So, for me, it literally felt like, oh, you have a mother, you don't have a mother. You have a mother, you don't have a mother. And it would happen at like the most extreme time. So essentially I just like wasn't really able to attach, I guess. Obviously when this was all going on, I wasn't thinking consciously like, oh, I'm not attaching. Um, and that's kind of the problem. Um, I grew up thinking like certain things were normal. So like it's normal not to have like someone you can go to and cry to, or so it's normal not to have like that comfort next to you. It's like, all these things are normal. Um, and that's what I kind of grew up believing, which is why like I had no problem bouncing from home to home and I didn't cry and I didn't like do what a normal kid would do, you know, if they left their parents at like two and went to go live with someone else. They would be like, bro, where's my mom and dad? Like, what the fuck? Like, I don't know y'all, but I think that a lot of it is on this attachment piece, this attachment disorder piece that, you know, I just never really got to deal with. Um, and it was exasperated because things came up that reminded me of it. Um, there's like very specific memories that I've talked about before um, that just stand out in my mind that like I felt sort of that distress from. There was that time, you know, I was just walking down the street and you know, I happened to see my mother. I hadn't seen her in like a year or two or whatever. I hadn't seen her in forever. And it was like, oh, hello mother. Like as though you're a friend I haven't seen in a while. Like, how have you been? So there's a lot of things like that that are tied to my mother. I think like also the biggest one was that when she was diagnosed with breast cancer in high school, um, you know, she had lived with us when she got sick um, and like, it felt like I had a mother for the first time in like forever. Um, you know, I'd come home from school and she'd be there. Um, she would be cooking me dinners when she wasn't like at doing chemo. Um, she would read to me. Like she was my mom for a good two years, like eighth grade, freshman year of high school. Um, and then she died. So again, like feeling that like sense of like security and like everything that I've ever wanted being then ripped away from me. And again, that's not her fault. None of this was her fault. Um, she's, she had a sickness and then she had like a fatal sickness, obviously. Um, but yeah, along with that is basically kind of similar. It was like the custody battle between like my father and my like aunts or like, you know, my mom's side and my dad's side. It was like, it was intense. Like, you know, as a kid, like now I would be thinking like, if y'all don't shut the fuck I would, I would, I'd kind of know how to react as an adult, but as a kid, you know, you're like, everyone is arguing, everyone is fighting, nobody knows what to do, and it's kind of all my fault. Even being at my aunt and uncle's house, like, you know, them basically adopting me and me living there permanently until, you know, I was 18, from four until I was 18, um, there were times when they would get, like, 
pretty heated and stressed and like fed up and they would say things you know flippantly you know maybe not you know parents say things like i'm gonna beat your ass or something like that didn't say that but like they would they, they said much worse things they would say like you know you can go back and live with your father if you really want to you know if you don't like if you're not like if you don't want to be here and you're like acting up or if you told this lie or if you like did what any kid does you know kids are naughty as hell um it felt like as though i would have to leave them um and that was an uncomfortable feeling and i only felt that way because like you know it wasn't perpetuated throughout my childhood but like at times when i was like bad or like misbehaving or when they were upset you know it would come up in conversation it's like all right well you don't have to be here you know um and like that always gave me a false sense of security and i think that like while i didn't show it at the time um, I honestly just kind of sat there with a blank face. Again, the attachment disorder piece coming in, like I just like kind of was just like, okay, whatever. Um, I deeply felt that, like I deeply felt that, or at least I'm now deeply feeling that, like, bro, how could you say that? I either like feel things very strongly when I get attached or, you know, I don't feel things at all. So there's been times, you know, where I just like, am like, I don't react to things and maybe I should be reacting to them um, or I don't express my needs. Um, and like how I'm feeling. And I think that's because like, honestly, it happened so much as a kid where it was like, they were ignored. Like why feel needs like when like the people around you aren't gonna like give you those needs. Essentially it's like dysfunction of emotional awareness or like interpersonal relation or like all, all of that stuff is just like mixed up and fucked up and you don't have it. I guess now in recovery, I'm learning to have it, um, but it's still very much very much there um and the worst part about it is that like i don't always understand i don't always see it looking at both of these things i think that there's a lot of overlap i'm not fully there for feeling but it's kind of like these feelings are all coming back up um and i really wish they would stay down but i guess maybe that means i'm healing maybe that means i'm recovering i don't know <sighs> Ugh. Essentially, trauma has made me like detach from people, things, ideas, like concepts that normally would give me an emotional reaction. Yeah, uh, I think like in specific relationships as well, you know, just things that what society would say, you know, you should care about in relationships. Um, I don't really care. Uh, and I like try to make jokes out of it, but like I genuinely don't see sometimes like, not only do I not care, I genuinely don't understand like why I should care. Like I make a very logical calculation in my brain, like this has nothing to do with me or like I don't understand like why like that's a thing um, or like why I should do this. For instance, I guess like my grandfather is getting pretty old um, and he had like his leg amputated because of an accident, he had diabetic shock, all these different things that happened to him. He's in good spirits, like he's like, feeling uplifted or whatever um and like he's still living he's still like doing stuff a little bit because of covid he's inside a lot but nonetheless i have an old grandfather who i i got i guess i love him that's weird i can't even say that you know who i care about um and i'm always told by the family like specifically my aunt she's like you should call your grandfather you know he's living alone um his sister my great aunt passed away last year um you know my grandma passed away years ago his son my uncle and his daughter my mom you know Belle passed away you know it's like i should talk to him as his grandson you know call him frequently and check up on him and see what he's doing i don't feel the need to do that i know i should do that um but like i honestly like him being lonely and all that stuff if i'm being completely honest i know this sounds like an asshole-ish thing um that's his problem not my problem and i don't see why it affects me um but like society like logically i know that like that's not even the question um the question is like I should just call him because I want to talk to him. Well, like I shouldn't, it shouldn't be calculated in the sense that like, oh, I need to call him because otherwise he'll feel lonely and that's bad. Um, I should just want to call my grandfather, right? I mean, unless he was like abusive, blah, 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 which he wasn't. This is the whole confusion part here. And there's like a thousand different examples right here that either deal with relationships or don't deal with relationships. And I'm not sure if that's what like they mean when they say empathy and bonding type of thing. Um, but like, that's what I assume it means. All I have is examples and like, I'm matching the examples up with like, what I see on TV or what people talk about, or just, I don't know, what I think society would say and like things I just typically don't say out loud because they sound heartless. I think with this one, it's tricky because I know it should be something that I'm trying to fix um, and something that I'm trying to build on behaviors. Like, I don't know, 
in therapy, I talk about like why I don't feel the need to do certain things or like why I don't feel around certain things. Um, and then I try to put in behaviors to change those things. Even if I don't feel them or feel like I want to do them, I know that I should be doing them. So I like try to institute those changes. But like if the feeling's not there, then like the changes mean nothing. Does that make any sense to y'all? Now as an adult, I'm experiencing involuntary I've always all my mental illness emotions have always been involuntary um but like specifically now it's like i'll like have peg attacks and anxiety attacks out in public where like a song will like flash me back to something or like i'll just start remembering like all these like shitty ass memories that i had as a kid that i like had no problem with then um and, like i didn't care about or like i thought i didn't care about um or like i thought i'd forgotten um so that's no fun like having to like relive those moments and then also have feelings about them um, things that happen i don't know like deaths in the family or like my friend is sick or like things that i should care about happen um i feel like there's a part of me that's like subconsciously pushing it down so that i don't have to experience that pain or negativity it's the struggle between like what am i supposed to do versus like because like what i how i feel doesn't match up with what i'm supposed to do um dating people i've gone like i've been like why do we need to talk every single day? Why do we need to see each other every week? Like, can't I just like talk to you every other day or like every three days or like, I don't feel like talking to you right now. I don't see why we need to connect right now. Like just come into my life when I want you to come into my life. Um, and it's like, I don't know what I should do versus cause how I feel is not good enough. Um, or it's not, that's, that's not the right term. How I feel makes people, it doesn't, I'm not empathizing or I'm not having compassion for others all the time. Now, sometimes I do, obviously, sometimes I do. Thank you for the multiple years of therapy. So yes, I do care, but like, there's times when I don't, and I think that's what people don't understand. They're like, how do you not know? Um, and it's even harder to work on because if you don't know something, and you don't know you know something, then like, how can you work on it? <sighs> all right, y'all, I'm done rambling at y'all. Um, I know that was a hot ass mess, but. Hopefully these will get better. Remember, if you like this video, give it a like. I would appreciate it. If you want to comment anything, your experience, if you like, want to like, and a further explanation, anything about that, like if you just want to comment anything, I would love to talk to y'all. Um, I'm lonely. <laughs> Leave a comment. Um, and lastly, remember to subscribe and turn on those subscription notifications for new videos each week. Peace.